Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation is on the national power grid. Yesterday, uh, a news uh, statement, of course, uh, put out uh, saying that the grid had collapsed. And, of course, there were efforts made uh, to revive it and bring it back into operation. Uh, we're going to be speaking this morning with a public affairs analyst, Mr. Nika Goule, uh, to share his uh, thoughts with us on this. Good morning, Mr. Goule. Good morning. morning. Great to have you on the program this morning. I, I want us to start from, uh, you know, understanding what it really means for a power grid to collapse. Okay. Just to take a step back, there are three phases in the power value chain. So you have the generating stations, which in Nigeria are thermal, which are gas powered or hydro, which is water. Yeah. Now, when these generating plants produce electricity, the electricity is put into the national grid. And the national grid is a system of wiring that takes electricity from the generating point to the point of usage. So as you can see on the screen, you see those high tension wires. That is the national grid. Okay. So, so, so these wires are taking electricity from the point of production to the point of usage. So when there is a system collapse, it means we no longer have power that is being transferred from the point of usage, I mean, from the point of production to the point of usage. So that is what it means. And, and what can, and, and, what can and, cause and that? Consumers, the impact on the consumers is power outage. Yeah, you obviously. You suddenly see that you don't have electricity in your home or in your office or in your business premises. Yeah, so, so, so what you've described now is not failure to generate, but failure to transmit. And uh, the, the statement yesterday was put out by the Transmission Company of Nigeria. But where, um, what I'm trying to understand is what can cause you know, that you know, system failure? Um, if power is still generated, but there's just no transmission, what can possibly cause that? Yeah, so um, if we look at the cause of the system failure, the cause can actually be generation or transmission because the generation stations themselves can experience outage. For instance, if there is an issue with a pipeline that is taking gas to a power plant, that power plant is going to go out of outage, it's going, it's going to, to shut down in terms of production. So uh, the outage can come from generation or it can come from transmission. And if it comes from transmission, it, don't, it simply means that the system has stopped working. You know, it's, it's an electrical system. One thing with electricity is that you cannot store it. Yes. So once you produce it, it has to be used. There is no system to store electricity. So that system of taking electricity from the point of generation to usage you know, it's just like the switches we have in our, in, our, in, our, in our homes. You know, you can have a switch go off, and that means electricity is gone. So that is the kind of thing that could happen, you know, that the, the switches and the, the, the stations, the substations, they, they can just go off, and then that means uh, electricity is gone. Hmm. All right. So we know that uh, stats say that uh, from 2013 to the year 2020, that the government run national grid has failed 84 times and partially collapsed 43 times. And what, what does this really say about Nigeria where, you know, when you compare to places like Ghana, it seems, you know, it's, it's quite the opposite. Well, so, um, one of the advantages of a national grid is that electricity generated from all the power plants or majority of power plants in the country are put into the same system such that if a generating plant goes down it does not mean electricity for the entire country has gone down because you know other stations will be injecting into the into the national grid now, Nigeria's problem is that 
we, we are not even generating enough electricity. Let, let's, let's understand the statistics clearly. I mean, uh, it, it is stated that for every one million people, the level of electricity generation and distribution that will be adequate is 1,000 megawatts. So if Nigeria's population is 200 million people, then we are expected to be generating 200,000 megawatts. Now, look at what we are doing. We are doing 4,000. So just look at the, the difference between 200 and 4. We need 200,000 megawatts. And we are doing 4,000 megawatts. It, it, this, is, this is totally insufficient electricity. It, it's not going to be possible that we are going to experience the kind of power supply we see in the likes of Ghana that you have mentioned or elsewhere. Because you simply cannot give what you don't have. But th does, this also, does this also mean that even as inadequate as our power generation is, we still don't even have the infrastructure, the power infrastructure that can uh, carry 5,000 or 4,000 megawatts without collapsing every uh, two months? That is, that is another issue. And, and that kind of compounds our problem. Because even now, as we speak, Nigeria's installed generation capacity is about 12,000 megawatts. But we have a transmission capacity that is about 7,000 megawatts. So that alone strands 5,000 megawatts or whatever we generate. You know, so that bottleneck of having a transmission capacity of 7,000 megawatts, at the end of the day, what actually lands with the distribution companies to go into our homes and our businesses and our offices is about three to 4,000 megawatts. So you, you could see that even with the little generation that we are doing, we are still not taking that power to where it is needed. And the reason why this system collapses are hap happening is simply because we, we, these systems have been built for a long, long time. And what they need is upgrade. They need expansion. They, we, 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 don't, we, we have not heard of any substantial upgrade on Nigeria's transmission, transmission grid for the many years in the past. We so, have not so, heard it. so who's to blame for yeah. that? The fact that we don't have the adequate infrastructure you know, for power generation and transmission? The, the person to take the blame is clearly the federal government of Nigeria. And how do I mean? There are a lot of issues involved. The first issue is that anything that the government does doesn't go well. We have examples. And a very, the clearest example we can think about is telecommunications. Um, I, I don't know if, if you are old enough, but the, uh, you know, our viewers who, are, who were old enough, they will remember that when telecommunications was under the control of the government, before you will make a phone call, you go to the NITEL office and you queue up at the NITEL office trying to make a phone call. People used to go to NITEL office in the AM so that they'll be able to push a call through. The entire country had 400,000 telephone lines. And these telephone lines were made up of, of, of fixed lines and what we used to call not nine not. And th this way, what you will say were mobile phones. Now, what happened, the government decided that they were going to push this power set, I mean, uh, telecom sector into the private sector. In 2001, MTN came in. That same year, we got well, what's Airtel today coming. And then two other companies came in, Glow and, uh, and Nine Mobile, as they are called today. What is the result? Nigeria's teledensity is now 200 million lines. We're talking about 400,000 that we had 
to 200 million. Why? Because the private sector brought in their money, they invested, they expanded capacity, and they're able to deliver telephone that Nigeria didn't have to Nigerians. And that is exactly what we need in the, in, in the electricity sector as well. We just need government to move away and hand over the sector as they did to the private sector. So the private sector, whose business it is to generate, transmit, and distribute electricity, we come in and just do the same transformation that we had in the telecom sector. But th th there's been, I believe there's been some investments in electricity in the last couple of years. And with this current administration, they've made mention of uh, power plants that have been, you know, um, that have been uh, paid for, um, partnerships with uh, Siemens, I believe. I'm not sure how far that has gone. Uh, with regards also, you know, developing our power sector. So, so don't you think that that is, or oh, those are, you know, steps in the right direction? Steps in the wrong direction. And how do I mean? The, 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 the agreement with Siemens, which was signed, I mean, the, 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 the German, the German uh, chancellor, Angela Merkel, she came to Abuja in 2018 to meet with uh, the president, President Buhari, and they agreed this deal. 2019, they had the implementation agreement signed. And then last year, they, they, they actually signed the pre-engineering uh, contract. We haven't heard what has happened in 2021. That agreement said by 2021, Siemens was going to increase output to 7,000 megawatts. And today we're talking about a system collapse. And what is the reason for this? The reason for this is that I, I, will, I will play electricity sector with the telecom sector because we have a very good example with the telecom sector. So all through this interview, I'm going to be benchmarking what is happening in electricity to the telecoms. And the idea is to, to let the government just do what they did in telecoms to the electricity sector. If we invited MTN, and instead of letting MTN as a business to invest their money, provide telephones to Nigerians, and begin to reap their investment, Instead, we said uh, MTN come, you have to enter a partnership with the government. And you know how government processes are. You know, are we going to be having 200 lines of telephone today? The answer is absolutely no. Because number one, the government does not have the money. If you look at the 2021 budget, the entire capital allocation to the Ministry of Power is 200 billion. 200 billion uh, um, um, naira is, is, is $22 million. What will $22 million do? The likes of MTN are investing trillions every year, trillions into the telecom sector. So that agreement with Siemens is not the way to go. The way to go is government needs to get out of the way. If they were inviting Siemens, they would have invited Siemens and given Siemens a free hand to bring their money, bring their technology and expertise, and invest in the Nigerian power sector. And the Nigerian government will only be responsible for regulation. Because for the telecoms, what the Nigerian government did was the Nigerian government set up the Nigerian Communications Commission as the, as the regulator. And they allowed MTA. Just imagine, if we said MTN and Co should come in, but they must use NITE mask, because NITE is the Nigerian government-owned telecoms company. And we insisted that MTN must use NITE mask to provide telephones to Nigeria. Are we going to be having 200 million today? The answer is no, because NITE would have created a bottleneck. And that is exactly what is happening today. When the Nigerian government privatized the, the electricity sector in 2013, they privatized the generation 
and they privatize the distribution. But they are holding onto the transmission. Now, the, the, the jet codes, when they produce, they are not able to carry it through because transmission is a bottleneck. Oh. So, and, and the distribution companies can only distribute what they have got. So the national government needs to leave, leave the sector entirely. Just leave. Okay, well. Set up a regulator, a... let them regulate the market. But let the private sector be responsible for generation, transmission, and distribution. Yeah, Actually, does, um... in the United Kingdom, where I'm sitting now, as I speak to you, there are four sectors, not just three. You have generation, you have distribution, you then have wholesale, and then you have retail. What that means is that at the retail end, which is where the customers actually receive electricity, there is competition. So I can take my phone now and switch my electricity supplier. It's not like in Nigeria now where people in Lagos, they are either with the Keja uh, 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 power company okay, or the see. ones in Ireland. And if Keja doesn't supply you electricity or the staff treat you anyhow, you have no way of changing them. All right, Nick Agule, uh, we have to wrap up here. Uh, thank you very much. There's also conspiracy theorists who say that there's people who are intentionally sabotaging the electricity sector for reasons I don't know. But thanks anyway for joining us this morning. Um, it was a very refreshing conversation. We look forward to speaking with you again. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good morning, uh, Nigerians. Uh, power, I believe, was restored to certain parts of Lagos yesterday. I'm not sure if everyone has gotten power um, now. We got power um, around uh, past 5 a.m. this morning. Oh, I had, I had um, electricity from, I'm not sure what time, though I wasn't at home, actually. Um, but when I got home around 10 o'clock, there was electricity, and uh, it you know, lasted till this morning. Stay with us. Uh, Fela and Nikolakwa Kuti did it make it into the Rock and Roll Hall of uh, Fame in Nocti for 2021. Uh, do we know why? Um, how disappointing is it for Nigerians across the country and, of course, for the Kuti family, if, you know, if anything like that is uh, in their mindset? We'll talk about that next. We have a, an intellectual property lawyer joining us to have uh, this very interesting conversation and celebrate the Afrobeat legend this morning here on The Breakfast. Stay with us.